Hello everyone. Let's welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan. I have eight years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations, internal security, and analysis of Hindu newspaper. Here we would talk about how to crack prelims 2020. In regards to let's crack UPSC CSC English but prior to that you have a notification in regards to subscription that is crack UPSC CSC with India's largest learning platform an academy by subscribing you would get unlimited access which is live and recorded courses from India's best educators the privileges for subscription would be daily live classes wherein you can chat with your educator engage in discussions ask your doubts and also be part of answer polls you can have live tests and quizzes you can evaluate your preparation with our regular mock tests and quizzes and get detailed analysis on your performance you also have structured courses wherein all our courses are structured in line with UPSC exam syllabus wherein that would help you best prepare for the exam. You also have unlimited access. In regards to subscription, you would have access to all our live and recorded courses to watch from either mobile or laptop. So you have top educators at an academy. They are Sudarshan Gurjar, Ayush Sanghi, Prakash Kumar, Brunal Patel. You also have special classes from Dr. Roman Sainisa, Dr. Siddharth Arora, Lokendra Chauhan, Rakesh Verma, Ashish Malik. You also have the upcoming courses which are lined up in our Unacademy platform. They are capsule courses on 250 multiple choice questions for UPSC prelims 2020. You also have the comprehensive course on public administration you have capsule course on geography optional you also have let's crack UPSC CSC 2021 and when it comes to learner subscription you have 12 month subscription with a price of original price of 40,000 you have 24 months of subscription the original price is 52,000 and when you use my code SBT10 you can avail 10% discount on 12 months course fee and also 10% discount on 24 months course fee so 10% 10, 10 on 40,000 you can avail the subscription for 12 months for 36,000 and for 24 months you can avail for 46,800 generally it is said that UPSC preparation should be minimum one year to two years that is 12 months to 24 months so it is always advised for you to go ahead with subscription for 24 months wherein it would be an added advantage that you can have my classes on live or recorded and not only mine you can also have all the educators who are in the an academy so you can have the privilege and it's always better to go ahead with 24 month subscription because the difference between the 24 month subscription amount and the 12 months amount is just 10,000 variation. So always you get benefit, benefited by going ahead with 24 month subscription. And then we would get into the topic that is the Hindu analysis of the Hindu newspaper. So today we have a news which talks about the Supreme Court refers appeal against posters to larger bench. That means there was a verdict or a judgment which has been taken, which has been given, and then now again it has been, I mean, it has been pleaded in the Supreme Court, and now the Supreme Court is saying that we will go ahead with the or it would refer to the larger bench. So, what we will look at what is all about this. So, we have seen that on March 9th, Allahabad High Court has given an order. On March 9th, Allahabad High Court has given an order. And wherein it said that, or else the Chief Justice, that is of the Allahabad High Court Chief Justice, Govind Mathur, has held that there were 
roadside posters which were placed and those posters were placed because or they were displaced because they were the persons or the posters were carrying the personal details of the persons who were accused in the vandalism that means they were involved in the protest during the anti caa that is anti caa protest in december 2019 so we all are aware that there was protest in december 2019 in regards to the anti caa so when this protest had taken place there were vandalism which has also been taken up by few of the miscreants and then the U, uh, up government has come up saying that these are the are identified and then they they have put in all the people who were involved in the vandalism and then they have posted it on the walls for example here it is in the so when they have posted it then the allahabad high court has given a ju judgment saying that it is wrong or it is in violation of the individual privacy it is in violation in regards to the individual privacy and it is also in violation in regards to fundamental right so this has made sure that the march 9th high court that is the allahabad high court which has given a judgment which said that whatever the lucknow administration has gone ahead it is wrong and then it is saying it has said that this is absolutely in regards or in, or, or in regards to the violation of the individual privacy and fundamental right and then later on the lucknow government that is a up government or the lucknow administration has approached the supreme court and then when it has approached the supreme court a vacation bench of the supreme court on march 12th did not stay that means whatever the allahabad high court has given a judgment it says that it is really disturbing and police authorities whatever they have done it is wrong so now there is no stay on the allahabad high court decision which has been come up on the march 9th and then after the march 9th allahabad high court the up government has approached the supreme court and now the vacation bench which is now in the supreme court says that we will refer it to the larger bench and then justice that is lalit and bose said that there was a difference between videographing of a person's unsocial and right writer's behavior so the judge or the justice both of them are given a, giving a statement saying that whatever the videographing has been done or total entire videographing has been done by the police it says that as a evidence the state and the then the state whatever they have displayed the personal details here as we are seeing the board the both are little different and then the posters have come up even before 30 day deadline because whatever the up government has said is whoever are involved in the vandalism and whatever the vandalism has taken place and whatever the laws has taken place those law i mean that laws has to be borne by the people who are involved or who were involved in the vandalism so the posters have come up what the court says is the posters have come up even before 30 day deadline which has been given by the state government for the compensation to be done by the people involved in the vandalism to the particular shop or to the particular any particular uh, business people or to the even individual individual private properties so the supreme court has found that even before the 30 day deadline given by the up government you have gone ahead with the personal details posting it as a board which is against the violation of the indian individual privacy and then the fundamental rights so here in this case justice lalit has asked the solicitor general that is who is on behalf of the state government that is tushar mehta that wrongdoers have to be brought to book that means it is saying to the solicitor general or to the state government itself whoever are the one who are involved or whoever have done the wrong doings they should be brought to the book and the, and the justice is also asking the state government that you cannot go ahead with displaying the faces on posters which is against it and then initially they have to be brought to the books that means a, a law i mean the is the the law has to take its own course it says the court asked does the state has the right to display the faces in the public domain that is very important in the public domain and give rise to a presumption that they were guilty for all time to come so this kind of approach by the up government or the lucknow administration is not really accepted by the 
Allahabad High Court and even in regards to the Supreme Court, when the uh, Lucknow administration or the has approached the uh, Supreme Court, now they have said that they will go ahead with making sure that this case is referred to the larger bench. And the second one, the news item is in regards to the EZ, ESZ reduction, that is echo sensitive zone. So here we are talking about the echo sensitive zone. So where is this echo sensitive zone located? It is located in the national park. So which national park it is? Banergatha National Park which is in Bangalore. So what is the issue here? What is the point here? So the point here is that the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change itself has given a gazette notice saying that on March 11, 2020 that the central government hereby notifies that means it has notified that 100 meters to 1 kilometer of the place pertaining to the Banergata National Park that they have used it for making sure that it will be part of the or it will be taken away from the national park. So that is a cause of concern and then it says that as a park is part of the eco sensitive zone and this eco sensitive zone is of total 168.84 kilometers square kilometers. So again these points please make sure that it is very important for the prelims point of view. So Banergata National Park, Bangalore and then it is an eco, eco sensitive zone which has 168.84 square kilometers and then you have a another draft notification which was issued in 2016 so this is in 2020 the recent one by the ministry of environment forest and climate change and then the same ministry has gone ahead with another notification in the year 2016 which has marked the eco sensitive zone area as 268.9 square kilometers so what is the we are looking at is when it has issued a notification in 2016 it was 268.9 square kilometers in regards to the Banergata National Park eco sensitive zone but in regards to the uh, notification of the gazette which has come up in 2020 by the Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change it is it has shown the area as 168.84 square kilometers so it is cause of concern that what is happening to this Sens echo sensitive zone area which is slowly or gradually reducing and then Banergata National Nature Conservation Trust you have a trust for this Banergata National Park and when this trust is saying that around 30 percent of the echo sensitive zone area is been reduced that is initially to 268.96 square kilometers it has been reduced to 181.57 square kilometers so it is a threat to the echo sensitive zone so in regards to preliminary point of view please make sure that where it is located and what is the area and what was the initial and then later on and what the Banergata Nature Conservative Trust is actually uh, making sure that whatever the gazette has been come up with the ministry is wrong and which is which the area has to be eco sensitive area has to be protected and you have another news item in regards to the world heritage site so what is this world heritage site or why is it in news it is in news in regards to the ramapa temple so what is happening here is the government or the tourism department of Telangana has gone ahead with filing a or else come up with a dossier and then that is a nomination dossier. So the government on behalf of the tourism minister of Telangana government has come up with a nomination dossier saying that Ramapa temple should be considered as a world heritage site that the dossier which was submitted to the archaeological survey of India and then later on they say that because of the kind of it has history and all that it has to be considered as world heritage site 
and then the tourism minister has also said that they have submitted on Jan, 3, Jan 10, 2019 saying that they have done it or submitted to the director general and then later on also it was forwarded to, to the UNESCO. So this dossier which was initially in the year 2016 and then later on again 2010 when they have come up with a new dossier or the final dossier initial dossier and the final dossier in January 10, 2019 submitted to the Director General of Archaeological Survey of India and then later on it was forwarded to UNESCO wherein they wanted this Ramapa temple to be recognized as a world heritage site and then there is one point in regards to prelims point of view wherein you can try to focus here is that there is a person Vasu Poshyananda who is from Thailand and he, has a, he is an expert for evaluation of Ramapa temple so again this name is important for Prince's point of view wherein this Ramapa temple was nominated for International Council for UNESCO and then in regards to little bit information in regards to Ramapa temple they say that the government says that there, there is a 27 acre tank with an island wherein they wanted to go ahead with constructing the meditation center and then an auditorium and then making sure that it could be accommodated for tourists so that they can develop it as a tourism village and then because of the world heritage site they were expecting or forwarding the dossier all this construction is being going on in the or near the Ramapa temple and then next news is in regards to the COVID vaccine so as we all are aware that now the situation is that we do not really have any vaccine for the coronavirus but what is that we can go ahead is that there is only a possibility that we can go ahead with the prevention of the coronavirus so what kind of preventions have to be taken care and if if the preventions are taken care then are we in a really in a position to contain the coronavirus spread of the coronavirus and then how long we have to go ahead with the only preventive measures and then when the vaccine or the clinically tested vaccine would come up to make sure that we fight against the coronavirus and in regards to the vaccine of covid that is corona vaccine a senior health official has said that it will at least take two years to develop or go ahead with the clinical trials and then approval by who it will at least take two years so it's very long time and then we should we should always be that we should not panic rather we have to make sure that we have to follow the measures in regards to the preventive precautionary measures and then the head of the epidemiology and communicable disease and then along with the ic that is indian council of medical research and then few time scientists what they say is they have successfully isolated the COVID-19 virus they haven't found out the vaccine they have just successfully isolated the COVID-19 virus so this is needed for making virus vaccine extremely sorry so when they can try to isolate the COVID-19 virus so it is an initial step and then with this initial step the launching is that they would be in a position to go ahead with making the virus and making the vaccine so when they can go ahead with making the vaccine no doubt it will take as per the senior health officials at least two years and there are two ways of going for vaccine preparation so we have to make sure that we we are ready for the vaccine preparation so you can go ahead with the vaccine preparation that is one to look at the sequence of the genome as I have discussed in the previous classes how important or what is the importance of the sequencing of the genome so that we can make sure that from which place it has originated and then what is the uh, way we can try to find out the chemical basis of it and then how best we can try to find the vaccine for it. So we have to go ahead with sequencing of the genome and by sequencing of the genome it will lead to the development of antibodies that means in regards to the vaccines. And the other one is actually we have the strain that is the strain of the virus and then 
you we can go ahead with it developing trying to develop a vaccine which is always a easier option that means you you had two option that is to go ahead with the sequencing the genome or else you can at least identify the strain of the virus coronavirus by these two methods you can go ahead with the developing of the vaccine and then the next is in regards to the we have bills which were been introduced in the Rat Sabha and then they have got the nod that is the clearance from the Rat Sabha. So the bills which were introduced and then got the nod that is the clearance by the Rat Sabha is the bankruptcy court and then the mineral law. So we will look at the two bills that is insolvency and bankruptcy court bill to 2020 and then the mineral laws amendment bill 2020. So these two bills were passed in the Raj Sabha. So again this for prelims point of view please make sure that you are keeping in track I mean all the bills which have been passed both in the Raj Sabha and Lok Sabha or else which are pending for the president assent or else which have been got the assent of the president and which have come into force as an act which could be a probable question in the prelims 2020. So in regards to the insolvency and bankruptcy court amendment bill what it says is the latest one what it says is it will help to make sure that the ring defense of the successful bidders of the insolvent companies so we know that this insolvency and bankruptcy court is because to make sure that whatever the insolvency or the bankrupt have been taking place by because of the few of the uh, investors or, or, the, or the offenders they can make sure that they can try to identify them try to what do you say uh, make sure that they are fenced at one point and then they can go ahead with the criminal proceedings for the offenses or the one who have been part of the bankruptcy court and then this was passed by both the Raj Sabha and the Lok Sabha and then when it has passed by the Raj Sabha the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Amendment Bill 2020 replaces the ordinance. That means before this bill was passed or got a nod in the Raj Sabha, it was as an ordinance. It was bought by the government as an ordinance and then later on it was introduced in the Raj Sabha and then it has been passed. Actually, the IBC has come into force in the year 2016. So today we are talking about which is an amendment bill and then it has been amended thrice since 2016 the insolvency and bankruptcy code has been amended thrice and then why it has been amended number of times or else three times the finance minister is saying that the changes requirement it has been amended because of the changing requirement and because of the requirement of fine tuning so there is always a possibility that we need to make sure that as per the change, as per the need of the situation, the minister, that is the finance minister has come up saying that we have gone ahead with amending thrice, taking into the effect that the insolvency and bankruptcy code would be in total effect to make sure that they are holding the offenders and then the they can try to make sure that again they can take back the amount whatever they have been as an insolvent and then we will look at the highlights of the IBC bill 2020 because it will be again a probable question for prelims 2020 insolvency and bankruptcy code amendment bill the highlights the code has now given the power to the creditors that they can initiate an insolvency resolution this is very important the new bill gives the power to the creditors the one who have given credit that they can go ahead with the insolvency resolution if the company fails to make any payments to them so it the power is given to the directly to the creditors they can they can initiate an insolvency resolution if they are not making any payments and in case of real estate companies at least 10 percent of the home buyers or 100 this is at least 10 or 100 such individuals 
whichever is less less in the sense whether it could be 10% of the home buyers or it could be 100 whichever is less this is very important so it, it could be in this statement 1 statement 2 statement 3 saying that which among the following are not part of the amend, uh, amendment bill 2020 insolvency and bankruptcy bill 2020 so the creditors will not be able to initiate the process if they fail to provide the necessary supplies to the company here the first point says that they have been given the power the creditors have been given the powers to initiate the insolvency but they will be they are given the powers to initiate the insolvency only if they can provide the necessary supplies to the company and if they have failed then they do not have the power to initiate the insolvency and if the company has paid the current dues this is also important during the moratorium period that means whichever the period wherein they, there is kind of what you say hold on the company and the other highlight is that if the management of the company changes prior if the management is changing we are very important is the cha management change to the process then the company will not be held liable for any offense again the best or the main highlight here is sometimes there is a possibility that this kind of tricks can be taken up and then if the management of the company changes prior to the process what process is that initiating the insolvency resolution then the company will not be held liable for any offense and then the other highlight is the process can be started up after the appointment of IPR what is IPR insolvency resolution professional we were talking about this initiating the insolvency resolution so you have the appointment of IPR that is insolvency resolution professional wherein they would look at the entire proceedings and then this appointment of IPR on the date of application to the national company law tribunal this is also very important national company law tribunal lc nc lt so these are all the keywords which are very important in regards to the brilliant point of view so make sure that you are aware of the ibc bill 2020 initially 2016 and then now 2020 and then it has been amended thrice and then the highlights and then next is then the mineral loss amendment bill 2020 along with the insolvency and bankruptcy bill 2020 which has been passed by the Raj Sabha. so the bill proposes i mean amendments what is the amendments it has the bill has proposed is that mines and minerals development and regulation act 1957 so there could be amendments to the mines and minerals development and regulation act 1957 and amendments to the coal and mines special provisions act 2015 so again this is an important prelims bit what kind of amendments have been taken up for the minerals law amendment bill there are two this and then the coal mines mines and minerals act 1957 the coal mines act 2015 and it has been passed on march 6 2020 and we will look at the highlights of this mineral laws amendment bill 2020 the amended provision clearly provides that companies which do not possess any prior coal mining experience in India or in any other minerals or in any other country can participate in the auction. The amendment bills clearly provide that companies which do not possess in or do not have any experience and they do not have any mining experience in any other minerals or any other country, they can also participate in the auction earlier it wasn't so so this the other highlight is this will not only increase the participation in the coal lignite block so the government goes ahead with the auctions so whenever the auction is going ahead or they take up the auction it is always important that there would be more number of participations so earlier has the companies which do not had previous experience in india or in other minerals or mining or in any other country they were not allowed to be part of the auction but now this amended one they can participate in the coal and lignite block auctions and it also facilitate the implementation of fdi policy in the coal sector so the highlight is they can go ahead with i mean they in the sense the companies can go ahead with the auction participating in the auction 
and then FDI policy is also implemented in the coal sector again prelims point of view which can be like statement 1 2 3 4 which among the following are not part of or, or is part of or amongst it so prelims point of view very clearly make sure that you are thorough with the highlights of the both the bills the companies that are not engaged in specific end use can also participate in the auctions of schedule 2 and 3 coal mines again when we are talking about it very clear he could also confuse the i mean the upsc can confuse you by saying that schedule 3 and 4 or schedule 1 or 2 or schedule 4 and 5 so 4 and 5 we can try to identify it but when he is saying schedule 1 and 2 or schedule 3 and 1 and 3 then it could be a confused it is very specifically in regards to the schedule 2 and 3 of the coal mines act, act coal mines act 2015 and then the highlight of the, the other highlight is in regards to the removal of end use restrictions. So we have seen end use restrictions has been removed which would allow why they have re removed the end use restriction by removing the end use restriction it would allow wider participation in the mile coal mine auction. So obviously we have seen here auctions we have seen we are also looking at here auctions. So auction is very important and then in the auction a larger number of participation is very important in regards to the auctions taking place in regards to the government auction especially in regards to this uh, bill that is coal and ignite block auctions. So we have looked at both the highlights what is IBC bill 2020 and then in regards to claims and then highlights of it and then in regards to minerals lot amendment bill which is in regards to mines and minerals I mean changes to the Mines and Minerals Act 1957 and Coal Mines Act 2015 and then the highlights. So prelims point of view please make sure that you are thorough with this. And then you have the other one which is international news which talks about the reasons for the oil price slash. So we are aware that there is slash in the oil price since March 9th. Global crude oil prices have fallen down. So the reasons for the uh, global crude oil prices slashing is we are aware that one of the main reason is in regards to the outbreak of the coronavirus and then for the when the outbreak of coronavirus has come up there was very clear that the imports and exports have come down very drastically and because of the imports and exports coming down very drastically it has directly impacted on the demand of the crude oil. So when it has impacted on the demand of the crude oil, so definitely it, it, it will direct, it is directly proportional to the, proportionate to the supply of the crude oil. So there has to be a clear equation of the balance between the supply and demand of the crude oil. But because of the coronavirus outbreak, the demand has become less and there is supply. So there was a cause of concern in the international crude oil prices. So when the demand is low, when the supply is not really high, then definitely the prices will come down. So at this juncture, what has happened is adding to the coronavirus, the impact of the coronavirus onto the global or crude oil prices. The next thing what has happened is that there was a kind of situation which has come up saying that the OPEC plus cooperation or OPEC plus countries have come up saying that we will not come out with cut in production of the oil. They, they said that they will not go ahead with cut in production of oil. So who are the one who have said that they will not go ahead with cut in uh, production of the oil? That is Russia and Saudi Arabia. So along with the coronavirus and again along with the OPEC countries or OPEC, OPEC plus countries that is Russia and Saudi Arabia which have come up saying that we will not reduce the output production because of the coronavirus. We will still further go ahead with the production. That means if we still go ahead with the production of the oil, supply will be high, demand will be low and thereby that will impact the prices. And then it will impact the prices of the crude oil in such a way that it will drastically fall down. So now we will get into how or what is that really happening in the global crude oil market in regards to the supply demand and also in regards to the price, oil price. 
So this OPEC plus countries have actually requested both Russia and Saudi Arabia to go ahead with the cut in the or output. But both the countries were not ready to budge with the OPEC plus or OPEC, OPEC organization and that they said that they wouldn't go ahead with what the OPEC countries or the OPEC organization is saying to cut the production but they would go ahead with further supply of production. And when they have said it or this was the uh, cause or this was said by both Russia and Saudi Arabia, immediately there was a biggest single day crash since 1991. That is almost since 30 years when 1991 in 1991 the uh, Gulf, US Gulf War has taken place. We have experienced such a kind of what you say drastic slash in the oil prices globally. And then the next is that is we have seen on the March 9th there is such a kind of what is a biggest single day crash which has taken place and this has again impacted very badly the global equity markets. So look at first coronavirus and then Russia and Saudi Arabia not budging to actually stop the output production of the output that has impacted a single biggest single day crash and then of the, of the oil price and that has again impacted the global equity markets. That means all the markets in the world have drastically fallen down and this has made sure that the prices of the crude oil price per barrel has come down to 34.36 dollar per barrel but actually somewhere around 2019 December it was somewhere close to 64-67 US dollar per barrel that means it has impacted a lot and that will really be a cause of concern and now when we are looking about the, the the two countries that is Saudi Arabia and Russia why the why the initiate why the decision taken by the Saudi Arabia and Russia in regards to the not stopping the production has impacted such a bad on the oil prices slashing the oil prices such a bad is that because both the countries are the world's largest oil producers okay no doubt apart from the US shale reserves even US has come up with the largest production of the oil making sure that they are not just dependent on the Saudi Arabia and Russia even US has come up that is the US shale reserves. So we will look at there was something some kind of what you say diplomacy which has come up in 2014. So what is the diplomacy which has come up in 2014 along with the OPEC plus cooperation that is it was the diplomacy is called as gut glut diplomacy. So what does this glut means? That means oversupply, oversupply. So there was oversupply of production. So OPEC plus Saudi Arabia and Russia in 2014 have come up with 2014 glut diplomacy. So that they wanted to make sure that the prices will not slash below 30 US dollars per barrel and then they were okay with it but we have seen that on March 9th that is March 9th 2020 there was actually a deal on in the month of March 2017 in the month of March 2017 there was a deal or three year pact three year pact three year pact in 2017 that they will abide by the what kind of production has to take place and why the production has to be reduced at what time. So the deal was there and as per what you said that deal from since 2017 now 2020 this March end that deal will what do you say end I mean that the, the, the time period of the deal is from March 2017 to 2020 this March. So when they had a deal now now both Saudi Arabia and Russia have come up saying that we will not abide or we will come out of the deal of the three year pact deal of 2017 and in this entire episode there is a kind of tug of war or some kind of what you say enmity which is growing between Saudi Arabia and Russia. So both as, as I said that both are the world's largest oil producers. 
so both wanted to show that diplomacy that they are far ahead in regards to the oil producing or they wanted to show that they can try to monopoly so what is the strategy what the saudi arabia is actually coming up with saudi arabia saudi arabia's oil chain that is aramco so this company aramco has announced that it will increase the output as we have as we have learned that both saudi arabia and russia said that we will not stop the production we will go ahead with the production and in turn now saudi arabia has said that we will increase the output fine from 9.7 to 12.3 million barrels so that the production increases and that the supply is in excess and then it also says that aramco company also has offered discount to various companies which wherein it is actually marketing the oil so why it wanted to go ahead with the discount first of all it it really impacts to the global price of the crude oil that means it the prices will definitely shoot down because the demand is al also not very high demand is low thereby the prices will also fall down because the supply is very high when the supply is high when the demand is low definitely the prices will slash down at this juncture they have gone ahead saudi arabia strategy is to make sure that they increase the output not only increase the output they are they would also go ahead with giving the discount in regards to the purchasing or the sale of the purchasing the variety of crude oils so why they are doing is to generally or particularly to target the russian markets in asia and europe so what does it mean that means russia is or russia's economy is totally dependent or maximum russia's economy is dependent on its exports of crude oil so when its russia's market is asia russia's market is europe so when russia will try to go ahead with exporting its crude oil to europe and asia so whichever countries in asia are purchasing the crude oil from russia or whichever countries are purchasing from the europe from russia those countries would be given discount so making sure that it would directly impact the russia's economy so that is the strategy of saudi arabia the fear of glut when we spoke about the 2014 glut diplomacy the glut is surplus so this will at this time when it is surplus and the demand that is we have the supply and demand shock as i as i said that there is lot of variation in regards to the demand is very low supply is very high and then definitely there is a shock that is supply and demand shock and this will definitely or it has already rattled the markets and thereby the prices have slashed down and then the other strategy in regards to saudi arabia is to flood the markets with saudi oil and then by the discounts it wanted to make sure that the prices are still slashed which would definitely hurt all the oil exporters so when we are talking about oil exporters definitely it will impact the russia russian economy and also it will also directly impact the us shale reserves or shale producers and then by doing this it wanted to make sure that russia will come back to the negotiating table that means it will come to some kind of what is a compromise that it will also try to not really go ahead with the production of the oil supply but it will try to cut short the production of the oil supply and here by making sure that it will go ahead with the increase and then discounts and then it will flood the market with the saudi arabia the question arises is that whether saudi arabia can really sustain the price war so again the keyword here is the price war price war in regards to the global oil price war for a longer period of time because what is important he is here to look at or else why the question is been is been arised here is because 90% of the saudi budget is coming from the petroleum sector please you understand again prelims point of view 90% of the saudi budget revenue is from the petroleum sector and once this they go ahead with the discounting and the prices slash down then it will impact definitely the entire saudi budget itself 
so what is important is how long is very important so how long the saudi strategy will really work out and then when it is very clear that the saudi prince mbs mohammed bin i mean sultan he is ready for economic reforms and then he wanted to go ahead with the diversification of agendas he has various agendas and he wanted to go ahead with the economic reforms when he wanted to go ahead with the economic reforms and then he has various diversification of agenda what is important is budget is important but when they go ahead with discounting and then the entire budget the revenue is from the petroleum sector the question is how the saudi arabia can really try to counter russia or russia's kind of increasing the production of oil now we will look at russia strategy that is vladimir putin's plan though russia has been cooperating with opec for 3 years that is whatever i said it is, is the 3 year that is from 2017 2017 three year pact there is a growing opinion in moscow that the output cut was hurting russia's energy companies so what russia feels is that by going ahead with the cut in output of the production it will hurt the russia's energy company and then these russian companies also want to open or it wanted to go ahead with increasing its market share as i said that european or sorry russian market is asia and europe so it wanted to still further increase its market share russia is in relatively stronger economic position than saudi arabia so because we were here talking about the russia strategy to make sure that it will try to pressurize the russia to come back to the negotiation table or to compromise in regards to the sale of production of oil but what is important when we look at the strategy of russia and then again strategy or the plan of vladimir putin that is russia is that russia is having a stronger economic position than saudi arabia because oil now accounts for less than third of its budget revenue less than third but when you look at the saudi arabia it is 90% it is 90% here it is only one third so that is very important and the country has built a war chest of reserves that is in regards to the foreign exchange reserves around close to 435 billion us dollars reserves are already in place and then the amount of amount whatever are the are the, are the, the economic benefit what they really have relatively in regards to the oil is only one third of the russia's budget revenue and then russian president vladimir putin maybe for a longer game that means he wanted to really be part of the game itself he is wanting that let the game start and then i would be for a longer period of time in the game it is this oil price slash is turning to be a political game and then in this political game the i mean russian president or the vladimir putin he is very clear that he wants to take advantage or lead in this political game oil game so what he wants to do go ahead is whenever he is very particular about the increase in the oil production thereby he wants to make sure that the monopoly of saudi arabia is reduced in the in the entire world economy world market along with that saudi arabia he wanted to again target us shale oil industries not only both saudi and us but it also wanted to give a caution to even opec that what is the share of the opec cloth that is opec countries opec organization in the market so vladimir putin he is playing a very big long game he wants to to play that long game is now the oil game and then make making sure that entire this in this process it is not recommended or it is not really good that saudi arabia russia or us stick to their own plans if they do stick to their own plans definitely it will impact the supply demand of the oil when it impacts it will definitely impact the global economy when it impacts the global economy it is a cause of concern to many developing and underdeveloped countries so for the benefit of the developing underdeveloped 
and also the developed countries because only when the developing countries and underdeveloped countries are protected the developed countries can be sustainable or they can be at a trying to maintain themselves as a developed country so it is the need of the hour for opaque countries along with saudi arabia and then russia and then us not to fight or not to have their strategies and plans in plans in place but rather come to the negotiating table and then come up with the solutions wherein there will not be any further slash in the oil prices but and which will not really lead to the slash or the reduce in the global economy so this is the international news and then i hope this entire session of the analysis of the hindu newspaper was informative and then knowledgeable and it was very useful for you so please like the like my video you subscribe my video and also hit the button for further notification that is in regards to the youtube video let's crack upsc cs english and then you can also use my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 to get additional discount when you go ahead with subscribing my video and then it is not only that you can also have the view of my video but also you can also go ahead with experiencing various other top educators thank you and see you tomorrow at 8:30 pm